Rock and roll doesn't matter as much now, nor is it as, sen is it as central to people's lives as it was when uh, I was 19, 20 years of age and promoting the best bands in the world at Leeds University. And how lucky was I to be in that position? After 60 years, I've pretty much been exhausted. I, mean, I think it's an unfair, an unrealistic expectation to expect that there should be anything left in, any life left in the old dog after all that time. And we don't expect that of other art forms or other sort of movements, if you like, that come along, whether that's in the visual arts or, any, or music or anything else. So while we're still expecting uh, innovation and imaginative stuff to emerge from the form of rock and roll still after all this time, I, I really don't know. But we do. Uh, and I think that, that leads to a state of permanent disappointment and exasperation. And it also leads to the same old crap coming round and round again. I mean, we're seeing at the moment, um, and you have to be really of a certain age, like my kind of age, to have that perspective. That's one of the advantages about growing older. I mean, we are seeing a renaissance, a resurgence of pomp rock and prog rock by stealth. Beware. The buggers are at it again. And we might have, to, I was going to say, we might have to have another punk revolution, but you can't have another punk revolution, just as you can't have any other precedents uh, or innovations like that. A precedent can't happen, but can't be set twice. You can't have another Beatles. You can't have another Bob Dylan. And don't get me going on protest music. You know, Morrissey said recently, quite rightly, that there's no longer any social commentary songs being written and recorded. He's quite right. You know, during the period uh, of the, um, the Gulf War of 2003, the attack on Iraq in 2003, I was on Radio 3 doing my regular weekly programmes, crying out for some protest music. I was on the march with a million people in uh, early 2003, before, just before the war started. I saw that there was that feeling uh, in the country and all those people on the streets, and I was one of them. And why? Uh, particularly at a moment like that, was I having to reach for Phil Oakes records from the anti-war songs from the mid-1960s. Very good songs, but nobody was producing them at the time, or very, very few, one or two notable exceptions. But very few people uh, were, were saying anything musically about that at the time. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happened. There ought to have been an outcry musically, you know, with, in, with popular music, and, and there, there wasn't. And I was reaching for... I ain't a marching anymore from 1965. I mean, the recent student protests about tuition fees, that was slightly encouraging. The, 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 our young people took to the streets over something. Um, but when all said and done, it was about themselves, wasn't it? Uh, but we've never really been very good at it. The French are very good at it. The Greeks are very good at it. You know, the, 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 the French will uh, take to the streets and uh, uh, civil unrest will break out. At, at the drop of a chapeau. Uh, and, and the Greeks are fantastic at it. They'll start scrapping with the police and throwing petrol bombs um, for, uh, <laughs> on the slightest pretext. But we've never been very good at, at that kind of militancy. I've always seen my job really as your, the listeners, funnel and filter. You know, it's my, it's my job to, to sit at home all week listening through those piles and piles of dreary CDs, panning the pebbles until we find some nuggets of gold. And somebody's got to do it, and it is actually a tough job. You know, you can't shorten that process of listening to music. And you do have to go through an awful lot of rubbish before you find decent stuff. When I'm doing that job properly, say for a two-hour programme on Radio 3, to, do that, to put that together properly probably takes about four days of listening. That's how much... Uh, that's how thorough I am in, in doing that listening. And funnel, yes, I gather that stuff and uh, channel it to you through the medium of BBC Radio. And filter, your Uncle Andy takes out all the crap for you first.